Hey everybody, it's Snods here, back with another video. And we're back here on MLB The Show 22. And today, I wanna show you guys the best PCI settings for hitting. Now, I'm not the greatest player in the world by any means, but I can make World Series pretty consistently. And I wanna make people better. I'm on Xbox, so I know people on Xbox struggle a lot. I'm gonna give some Xbox exclusive tips in this video as well. So be sure to tune in, subscribe if you guys are new around here, and let's get into it. So first things first, if you guys go into your settings and edit your batting and base running settings here, go to your hitting view and make sure that you are on strike zone. Now, I always recommend doing strike zone because it is the best view and all the top players use this camera. So, I mean, they must be doing something right. Now, if you guys don't like Strike Zone at all, you absolutely cannot use it. It's too hard for you. I would recommend maybe looking at Strike Zone 2 or 3. Um, honestly, there's really nothing else in here that I like at all. Um, I've tried Strike Zone. Uh, there was something else. Uh, Zoom, I've tried that. I don't like that at all. It's, it's, it's really all in Strike Zone, guys. You just have to find what is what is your groove find what you're most comfortable with and stick with it once you find it when it comes to in play offense this really doesn't matter this is all preference i do medium kind of gives me the best view of the ball where it's going to land if a ball is going to land in the gap or not i know a lot of people use high high is a really good in play view for offense as well you can really see where the ball is going uh dynamic is pretty cool that's really it uh, you get a really cool camera angle when you hit a home run for dynamic, but you really can't see where the ball's going in dynamic. So I recommend high or medium. Hitting in your interface, obviously you want to have zone. Do not do directional or timing. Uh, if you want to be competitive, you got to do zone. Obviously input type is going to be buttons. Analog type is flick. PCI anchor, this is a big one. This is new for this year. I'm going to try it out this year. I think it's gonna work nice. The reason why I think it's gonna be nice for people is because a lot of people start their PCIs high, they might start them inside, whatever it may be. So basically what the anchor allows you to do is to click the left stick in, say you wanna start your PCI inside, right? You'd flick your PCI over to the inside, click your left stick in, and your PCI will actually stay there and you won't have to hold it there. So. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, handy for people that like to start their PCI at a certain spot. PCI anchor dots, what this is, there's going to be uh, nine dots that are on your strike zone. And those dots will basically tell you where the anchor can go. And when you click the left stick in on that spot, it'll light up and that'll let you know that the anchor is locked in and you're good to go. Play coverage indicator, obviously you wanna have that on, that is for your PCI. And this is where things get interesting. This is what I like my PCI to look like. I like to do diamonds for the center. I like to do basic PCI inner, no PCI on the outer part. And I like my color to be yellow. With the color, I've seen a lot of people change this up. I've always liked yellow. I don't know what it is, but I see the ball a lot better with yellow. I don't recommend using white because that is the same color as the baseball. Maybe it's just me. It's really hard for me to see the ball when I have a white PCI. And for the transparency, I like to do 60%. 60% I feel like is perfect. Uh, it's, it's not too dark and it's not covering up the baseball either. So it gives you a little bit of light. And it, I mean, it's just good vision. And then for PCI fade out, you wanna have none because you do not want anything to fade out while the ball is coming in. Now, this is obviously all preference here. You go with what you're comfortable with, but a must have in here is to have that strike zone and make sure that you have the zone interface. All right, so we're hopping into practice mode here. Uh, this is for all the Xbox people out there. They still have not fixed the Xbox controller issue if you guys use just the standard Xbox controller that comes with the next gen, there's a little bit of lag. Um, I'm gonna show you guys real quick all the different types of controllers that I have and what I recommend buying. All right guys, sorry about the Echo. Um, these are three con different controllers that you can use for Xbox and I'm gonna let you know 
which ones you guys should get. The first one here is your standard next gen controller. And that controller is pretty much unusable in MLB The Show. And you're gonna struggle if you use that controller. It's very laggy and I'll show you in the video here. This one to the left is a little pricey. It is the Thrustmaster for Xbox. It just recently came out. You can find it on Best Buy. It's for $159.99. Uh, it's a little pricey because you can remove the... This is hard to do with one hand. You can remove the analog sticks and adjust it to however you want to do it. Um, it's pretty cool. I like it. But it's obviously not recommended because of the price. This is the one that I recommend for you guys. This is an Xbox controller that's available at Walmart, probably GameStop as well. It is a wired controller. You plug in the wire here at the top. Same with the Thrustmaster over here. Um, so this one is probably the most recommended because it's only 30 bucks, and it gets rid of that uh, latency that you see in pinpoint pitching and the PCI when you hit. So this is the one you guys need to get. It is the Power A Xbox One controller, and you can buy it at Walmart for 30 bucks. It's a great deal. It's actually cheaper than your standard Xbox One controller, which is crazy. These are like 60 bucks. This is 30. And it's wired. And it's it's really not that it's really not that bad of a controller. I did get some stick drift after a few months, but it's not it's it's still manageable. It's better than what this controller is. Live game here, and I wanted to show you guys the differences and the controllers now remember this is only for xbox this is the Thrustmaster. notice how smooth my pci is notice how responsive it is it's very good and it's so much better than using the standard controller that comes with the xbox now this is the 30 dollars power a controller that i was showing you guys this is at Walmart and it's only $30 and it's very responsive. It's almost as good as the Thrustmaster, honestly. Yeah, guys, if you guys aren't trying to spend much on a controller, I would definitely recommend going up to Walmart and buying one of these. As long as you get some kind of wired controller for Xbox, your PCI won't have that latency. You also won't have issues with the pinpoint pitching either. So that, that's a game changer to get the right controller. Now I will say this about the Power A controllers, they are cheap. So you know what you what you pay for is what you get. And it's it started it started to get some stick drift on me pretty quick there. I only had it for a few months and it started getting stick drift already, but that's pretty common with any controller really, but it's it's still usable. Now we are controlling the other team with our standard Xbox controller. And I want to show you guys on pinpoint pitching how bad it is. Like, look at how laggy the pitching is. Like, look at that. It's it's just it's impossible to use pinpoint, and you need to use pinpoint pitching in this game. But yeah, it's it's almost unusable. You have to you have to get a different controller. All right, guys. So here's a look at the normal standard controller for the Xbox on the hitting side look at the pci it just looks kind of glitchy i don't know if you guys can see it in the video but it's just i don't know it's just very weird the way it's moving around and it kind of throws you off it's almost like you're lagging and it when i was using this when i first got the xbox it was it was just hard to use and yeah just just get the power a controller or if you're looking to spend some money get the thrustmaster and then for the pitching, I will show you guys what the Thrustmaster looks like. And just look how much smoother that is. It's pretty equivalent to using a PS5. I've been on both consoles, and this is as close as it gets. The gameplay is much better on PS5, but if you want to get close to it, just get you a different controller. Let me know if these PCI settings help you guys out. Be sure to leave a comment below if you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe if you're new around here. I appreciate all you guys. I'm out of here. Peace.